few things before I get started. First of all, super proud and honored to be here. Second thing, I tend to speak a little bit fast, so if I'm speaking too fast, sorry. Um, third thing, uh, yeah, I had a vanity metric that I wanted to achieve. I wanted to be the talk with the most slides from the whole conference, so I, uh, you're going to eat 100 slides in 25 minutes, so brace yourselves. Let's get started. Oh, and last thing, you can challenge me at any point. I love people call, uh, when people call bullshit on one of my slides, bullshit. you can, boom, you can just go for it. Um, does anybody who hasn't seen the YouTube video know who this guy is, by any chance? I'm buying you a huge freaking beer if you know who this is. Do you know now with the name? Somebody want to guess? So this is Takeru Kobayashi. He's a 58 kilogram Japanese man and he is the world international champion of the Coney Island hot dog eating contest. The first time he participated in the contest, he gobbled down 52 hot dogs in 12 minutes. The world record was only at 25 hot dogs in 12 minutes. He was up against absolute mountains, right? This is like the big bad corporate. It's the big startup that's growing faster than you and this is the little startup. How did he do this? He experimented like a mofo for like six months is in his uh, apartment in Agona, just experimenting, experimenting, experimenting. He beat the world record five times in a row. Then everybody started to steal his growth hack, right? His growth technique. So anybody know what he did differently? Shit. Yes, that's exactly it. So he found two things. First thing is he separated the sausages from the bread. So everybody was eating the sausages. They were in this paradigm that you had to eat the whole uh, sandwich together. He separated the sausages from the bread. So he gobbled down 12 sausages as fast as possible. Second thing, there was a legal loophole in the Coney Island hot dog eating contest official guidelines is that you could have uh, any type of liquid that you wanted. Everybody was drinking the liquid. He would pre-digest the, the bun by dipping the bun into the, uh, into the water, right? And then he would just chug it down his uh, throat. You could check it on YouTube. It's absolutely disgusting. Um, <laughs> The point here is, if you're growing a company today, and I know this, I failed a lot, you better learn to eat hot dogs really fast and experiment eating hot dogs really, really fast. So this is me, Growth Tribe Academy. What we do is we take young, budding students, entrepreneurs, coders, I mean, this crazy bunch of people. Uh, we take hackers, hustlers, and hipsters, so coders, analysts, and marketeers. We stick them in growth teams uh, that look like this, and we teach the marketeers to code. We teach the coders to market, and we teach the analysts all of the above. And we stick them in a high growth or high potential startup for three months. Uh, and we give them some KPIs, increasing or reducing customer acquisition cost, increasing conversions, increasing revenue, and so on and so forth. We also uh, do adult education, crash courses. So we've trained over 500 marketing executives slash uh, bloggers slash uh, venture capitalists. We're also in corporates now, so we're teaching growth hacking. I'm going to say that word a lot. I'm sorry if you hate it. At uh, corporates and uh, insurance companies and uh, banking agencies. And uh, oh, there's my social proof. Uh, and then last of all, uh, we do this stuff. We're growth hacking the royal family. So this is Prince Constantine of the Netherlands not paying attention to my last uh, growth hacking workshop. <laughs> he told me he was taking notes. I don't know. He was actually scraping attendees at the next web, the Prince of the Netherlands. Uh, what's on the menu? So that's the end of the infomercial. Uh, so first I'll tell you what the hell I think growth hacking is, and second of all, I'll show, I'm sorry, I'll show you some tactics, some low-hanging fruits, because I'm all about you know, the low-hanging fruits. Um, growth hacking, technical marketing, growth marketing, etc. I don't care what you call it as long as it brings growth. But this is how we define growth hacking. By the way, we call it growth hacking because we've run so many A-B tests and we just convert a lot better when we call it growth hacking, period. So it's a mix of creating marketing, uh, creative marketing, coding automation, behavioral psychology, and a little bit of data and testing. So let's look at creative marketing. Um, let's look at the brain of the growth hacker. I'm going to say that curse word a lot. Uh, you guys know Udemy, biggest online learning platform in the world, 45,000 videos, something like that. It's a marketplace, supply and demand. Supply is courses, demand is students. Like any marketplace, this was them in the early days, nobody gave a fuck. Uh, you have a chicken and egg problem, right? There's no demand because there's no supply, there's no supply, so there's no demand. How did they hack the supply side of the platform? Did they run performance marketing campaigns to teachers? No, they asked themselves, where's our target audience hanging out right now? The answer was YouTube. They built a scraper that scraped the metadata off of YouTube so that they hacked the supply side with courses from uh, YouTube. Now that there were actually uh, courses on the, the platform, students started to come. Now that there were students, uh, teachers started to come as well. 
Everybody sort of knows the PayPal example. It's just 101 referral marketing now. This is the story that I hate from PayPal. It's just paying for customers, incentivized referral program. This is the story that I love. They analyzed their data, and they actually saw that there was a little glitch in the data. We're always looking for abnormalities in the data. They saw that uh, eBay power sellers were using the platform a lot more than other types of customers. How do you sell, how do you market to eBay power sellers? Do you run a, do you run a marketing campaign to eBay power sellers? No, you build a bot that goes around eBay and that just automatically buys products from eBay power sellers and then asks them, hey, I just want to pay with PayPal. So you artificially engineer a pain to the eBay power sellers. Whoa, I need PayPal. It's really trending. It's perfect example of a solution looking for a pain, not looking for it, and uh, edu educating the market about that pain. There's tons of examples. I call this growth hacking porn or startup porn. These are all tips and tricks, which we all hate, of course, but I love them because I love to look at sort of the patterns in these stories. So what do these have in common? The first thing is OPN. I stole this from Dan Martell, other people's network. Your target audience is already hanging out on other people's networks, other people's platforms, other people's services. You have to find out what those networks are, how to leverage them, and how to piggyback. It's extremely hard to build an audience. Start by borrowing somebody else's. Second thing is they tend to be creative or sneaky. When I sit down with legal, we call it illegal. Uh, we sit down with marketing guys like you, we call it creative. We could we could talk about ethics for a long time, and a lot of them are not sustainable, so you need a machine. And I loved what uh, Andres just said about people and process. You need a process to keep coming up with these techniques again and again. And the last thing is, it's quite technical. It's not just marketing anymore. So, second thing, coding and automation. Uh, I'm sorry, I sort of have a war reference also. I don't know why, it's something about, like I believe that if you're a conversion rate optimizer today, if you're a digital, marketing, uh, digital marketeer today, you're in the fucking trenches, and you better bring a bayonet and know how to use that bayonet. And this is today's bayonet, it's this skill set, right? It's this technical skill set. Um, I mean, if you're a marketeer today, you need to be able to pull a repository off of GitHub. You need to know some basic coding. It's just, you can't depend on a developer. But if you're lazy and if you don't feel like it, uh, and this is sort of our motto, we, and we really believe that marketeers should be held to the exact same standards as we hold uh, developers. There's no reason why not. But then if you can't code, don't worry, there's a million tools out there that allow you to do this stuff without actually knowing how to code. And I'll just give you an example of like a growth hack, like growth acquisition. People love this stuff, eye candy, growth hack porno. Um, so here's the example, imagine you're an on-demand printer and you've tumble upon this website with all of your potential clients. These are all the editing companies, right? The fashion editors. And if you click on one of the editors, you see that you can find is, uh, the, the URL of the editor. Cool. So you jump on a tool called import.io. You don't even need to use a Python script. And you just scrape the whole website. So now you've got like 5,000 uh, clients and their URL. Then you use another tool called Clearbit. Anybody use Clearbit for sales? So Clearbit scrapes the web and finds rich information about these uh, leads. It gives you the size of the company, the address, Twitter, na uh, Twitter handle, Facebook uh, account, LinkedIn account. Uh, then you use another tool called Email Hunter. Anybody use Email Hunter? Okay. Um, so Email Hunter, you put the URL of the uh, of the uh, you put the URL of the company, and it gives you s most of the time some email addresses from the person in that company. Doing this by hand sucks. So you use another tool called BlockSpring. It plugs in all of the APIs onto a spreadsheet. So then you have a beautiful spreadsheet full of leads. Okay. Then what? Who cares? Next thing, uh, and this costs two days, thirty euros, unlimited leads, right? Then what? So then you have all these uh, Twitter handles, so you need to prime those leads, you need to preheat them, make you top of mind. So you run a custom audience campaign just on those Twitter leads, so that for one week they only see your freaking ad on their Twitter feed, and when you finally send that cold email, they're like, oh, I know that company, it's really top of mind, I've heard about it before, I don't know where, but you guys have a huge marketing budget, you must be killing it. And this costs about 145 bucks, and it takes about a week. Then, what do you send as a cold email? Do you use a template? Fuck no. Use a tool called Crystal Nose. Anybody know Crystal Nose? Okay. So Crystal Nose basically scrapes people's uh, activity on... I'm allowed to curse, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Crystal Nose uses, people, uh, using, uh, uses a lot of information people, uh, that people share on LinkedIn to sort of identify and guess their personality. And then it gives you templates of how you're supposed to reach out to people. Works like a charm. We've worked it quite a bit. Little hack like this, we got 56% open rate, 23% replied positively, and we got 93 new paying customers. It, we did have to pick up the phone quite a bit, okay? It's not as beautiful as this. Here's one, I tr uh, and this is what these little workbooks, playbooks look like. Really fast, good return on investment. 
I tried to do one yesterday, so I tried to hack uh, Slee.do. I saw that it was really easy by using just a VPN to sort of upvote my own questions, so I was sure to always, that Pepper was always asking my questions. And then I put like a link, this was my landing page, I put a link to my e-course right here, because uh, I thought people were gonna check out my e-course and sign up to it. So then I did it on this one, and then I did it again. And beautiful playbook. Uh, this is what the playbook looks like. So small Python script, use a proxy API, link to our email course, email leads, blah, blah, blah. And then I make tons and tons of money off of your backs. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got zero leads, complete failure. It didn't fucking work, so I stopped doing it. And like a lot of these experiments, they just fucking fail. That's why you have to test as fast as possible. And this is, you know, this is stuff that Pep says. This is stuff that you read about on Conversion Excel all the time. Test fast, test fast. How do you test fast? How do you come up with these? You need a process. I totally agree with what you said. You need a freaking process. Uh, and it's all about data and testing. This is what the process looks like. It's a mix of lean. It's a mix of Brian Balfour. It's a mix of conversion rate optimization, hard and soft data, idea backlog, design experiments, uh, sorry, prioritize your experiments, design an experiment, execute the experiment, analyze the results from the experiments, and start again. So the days of the marketing campaign are gone. There's no such thing as a marketing campaign. They've been replaced with an experiment sheet. We believe that uh, to validate that we will do this, we will analyze these results. We are right if we reach these KPIs. And we drown in these experiment sheets. What these give us is not wins. They give, they give us unknown unknowns. We discover stuff that we had no idea that we didn't know. By experimenting as fast as possible, all the unknown unknowns come out. And then you analyze the results retention charts, conversion funnels, uh, segmented analysis, et cetera. The hard data tells you what's happening, was it a win, was it a fail, and then we know this by now. The soft data tells us why it happened, what, why it's happening on the website. Talk to users, usability testing, in-app surveys with stuff like Intercom, and then tools like Hotjar, or, you know, like uh, click maps, et cetera. And then the last part is behavioral psychology, because yeah, we want to be mind readers. So behavioral psychology plus coding, it's like UX. And then uh, data and testing with behavioral psychology, it's conversion rate optimization, which I'm not going to touch upon because you guys are already really sort of uh, up there and there's so much that has been said already. So this looks beautiful, implement the process, you'll make a million bucks. Actually, no, this is super painful and we screw up all the time. It's like all these consultant processes on, it doesn't work like this. The main reason why it doesn't work, first of all, is because people don't analyze the results from experiments, they just jump to the next experiment. But the main reason is teams are not able to execute because they don't have the right skills, and that's what we're obsessed about, having the right skills to execute, or at least the right teams. So in our academy, we only have three months to make a difference, so I'm sorry we have to go for some low-hanging fruit, and I'll share with you five low-hanging fruits that I believe work nine out of 10 times. First of all, people have the attention of absolute goldfish nowadays. We're bombarded with 250 to 3,000 ads on a daily basis. Nobody cares about your product. Uh, this is a number of products that are being released in beta version on beta list on a weekly uh, basis. They have great landing page, they have marketing spend, they have conversion copywriting. They're competing for the same audience. Um, I think uh, Andre Morris talked yesterday that motivation helps to increase conversions more than uh, usability. The motivation for people to sign up to your product, your service goes down because there's just so many options out there. And we believe that the number one reason why people don't sign up to your website is because they don't understand what the hell you're selling. They have no idea. And, they, and uh, so this is uh, my favorite slide of all time. This is research done by um, uh, Microsoft. It shows that this is, they analyzed 197,000 web pages, and it shows how people interacted with those web pages. After 10 seconds, on average, 97% of people have fucked off from your page. So you have like five to 10 seconds to actually explain what you're selling. Not only that, but you also have to explain why you're better than the competition in those five seconds. So, what does this website do or offer? Why is it better than the competition? I have a kind of a boring life. One of my passions is doing random webs five second tests on random websites to see who's getting this right. Um, beautiful user centric design, amazing photography, really inspirational. Five seconds, what do they do? Nobody freaking knows. Complete fail. Why is it better than the competition? I have absolutely no idea. Then we have Harry's, subscription service for razors. I ran it on like small sample size, 30 people. Everybody understood what they were selling and everybody understood why they were better than the competition. So please run these five second tests, super simple. It's like to pre-optimize your uh, anything that you do. Um, my benchmarks, 60% of people, on average 60% of people understand the website and on average 20% of people understand why you're better than the competition. Your goal is to get to 90% on both of these. Uh, here's the tool, Us who uses Usability Hub? Ah, cool. It used to be free, now you have to pay a little bit. Low-hanging fruit number two, I'm sorry, this is basic stuff, you've been saying it for years, everybody's been saying it for years. 
not much traffic, don't A-B test, just optimize without an A-B test, do a sequential test, or do a really radical A-B test. This is just A-B testing porn once again. My tomorrows, they give uh, terminally, terminally ill people access to drugs that are not on the market. We did a huge customer discovery interviews, uh, usability testing uh, process on them, and we were able to get good results. I don't work with a lot of very large e-commerce websites. Most of our clients don't have that much traffic. Go big or go home, or don't A-B test. Third one, I believe landing page optimization is for babies. Retention is for the big boys. It's for the adults. It's really hard. Uh, I'll show you why. This is company A versus company B. Company A is kicking ass on acquisition, 5 million users per month. They're on Product Hunt, Reddit, Hacker News, TechCrunch. They're just killing it. They have 80% monthly retention. This is company B. They only have 2 million users per month. They're not as good at uh, acquisition, but they have 95% monthly retention. This is six months. Company A is kicking company B's ass. What happens after 36 months, company A is completely flatlined and company B keeps growing. Retention is more important than acquisition. But retention takes forever to test. I have attention deficit disorder. I want to get results really fast. How do you measure for two month, three month, four month retention? You look for early signals. Anybody seen this thing before from uh, Andrew Chen? So anybody launching an app or have an app? Good. Um, this is your average retention rate after 90 days of all apps on the Google Play Store. The average retention rate after 90 days is like 3%, okay? And what we see is that the pain starts here. The pain doesn't start at 90 days, it starts at 3 days. So 3-day retention is an early signal of longer-term retention. Now, let's segment this by the top 10 apps, then the next 50 apps, the next 100 apps, the next 5,000 apps. What you see is that the big boys, the ones that are kicking butt, they can bend that curve a lot earlier. They bend the curve before. Three-day retention is a really good early indicator of longer-term retention. So low-hanging fruit number four, uh, identify and optimize for the insert one more buzzword, wow moment. So what's the wow moment? Well, the wow moment is people had a wow there. This can make my life better. And people didn't have a wow there. They were like, meh, this isn't great. I'm not actually going to come back to this product or to this service. Wow, this will improve my life. And this is really what we try to optimize for when we're trying to optimize for, uh, for retention. So these are famous wow moments. I'll just leave them on the slide. All of these were discovered through data science, through running cluster analysis and uh, regression analysis. We often don't have that luxury. So my... <laughs> You know, my recommendation is just guess your wow moment. You can probably guess it. I'm a big fan of back of the envelope calculations, you know, the Fermi paradox, all that stuff. You could probably guess your wow moment. Uh, second one is collect data, soft data. Um, here are some templates uh, if you want to use to collect soft data to analyze what your wow moment is. Your wow moment is basically the difference between customers who weren't retained and customers who were retained. What's that thing in the middle that ones did that the other ones didn't do? So you can do this running this through just customer interviews. Uh, this is my favorite one, using user recording videos from Inspectlet or from Hotjar. I sit down, I take a tea, I take 100 retained users, 100 users that were gone forever or that didn't convert, and I watch 100 videos at five, five times speed of both, and my feeble little brain can sort of decipher the data and find out what was the difference. What did the guys who stayed see or do that the guys who didn't see or uh, uh, stay, uh, who didn't stay not see? And then last one is ask a data scientist. If you have enough data, he'll run some regression cohort analysis uh, and some, uh, yeah, some regression analysis to find out, you know, what is the event that predict a highly retained user? Small tip. This is something everybody can do right now. I'd like you guys to first identify what your wow moment is on a piece of paper, and I want you to measure the number of events, the number of, an action, number of actions that a user needs to do to get to this wow moment. He needs to land on the page. He needs to scroll down. He needs to click on that button. He needs to input some information in that form field. And I want you to try to reduce this, whatever that number is, to reduce it by 90%. Try to get it to like one, two, or three steps to the wow moment. I know, it's easier said than done. Our wow moment takes like four weeks of emailing. Um, so I'm, I'm not even eating my dog food on this one, but try. And second thing, of course, segment the wow. There's a different wow moment for every single different customer that you have. So fruit number five is called flip the funnel. You guys all know the pirate funnel, Dave McClure. Everybody knows this stuff, I think. You need to uh, drive people to your website, get them to sign up, give them the wow moment, retain them. Hopefully, they refer their uh, friends, uh, colleagues, and grandmothers, and then get them to actually start paying for the product. I still don't understand why we make people sign up before we show them the wow moment. What's the point of asking people for their email or to get them to sign up before we get them to that wow, I need this in my life? So this is, this is what we call flipping, flipping the wow or flipping the funnel. Get them to the wow before they actually have to sign up. 
I'll give you some examples. This is Wealthfront. Anybody use this? This is like a robo-advisor, and it gives you personal finance advice, so you don't have to go see a banker or a human, um, a human advisor. They don't make you sign up. You click on the button. They make you fill out uh, five pieces of personal information. If you don't want to fill it out, good riddance to you. Uh, what are you looking for in a financial advisor? How much do you earn? What's your risk tolerance? And then boom, wow, they give you this semi-customized investment plan with all of the different things that you could do to diversify a portfolio of investment. This is the wow moment. This is correlated with highly retained users. Here's another example. Then they ask for my email address and all that junk. And then they put me through 25 other steps to actually give me a real customized uh, investment plan. This one, Stripe, their wow moment is they're targeting developers, so they allow you to copy-paste a snippet of code that you can install and that you can test with all of the different languages without making you sign up. It's all right there on the landing page. Reduc they reduce the friction at a maximum. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, this is one of our uh, examples. So this is Vendebron. Uh, it connects uh, windmill farmers directly to your house, so you don't have to go through the big energy suppliers anymore. The wow moment is seeing the farmer who you're buying the electricity from and how much it costs. And just by doing three simple things, we ask for the co postcode, we ask for the number of the house, and the current energy supplier, we're able to get people to the wow moment in three easy steps. This is another example. Uh, this is a to-do list. They uh, allow you to create a to-do list without having to sign up. And then if you want to keep your to-do list, you get to sign up to the product. Fail, it's a shitty product. So you know you were saying it. If you don't have a good product, there's no point in doing any of this stuff anyway. There's actually no wow moment here. Finally, engineered marketing. I think we touched upon it a little bit in the previous conversation. I'm absolutely in love with this stuff at the moment. Uh, engineered marketing is basically using some of your resources, some of your dev resources to build tools that will get shared. It's, it takes a lot of time to build content. It takes even more time to distribute that content. If you can build a piece of content that's going to go viral, it's going to be distributed again and again and again, it's super powerful. First time I ever heard about HubSpot with, was with their website grader, a tool that analyzes my website. Online dialogue yesterday, beautiful example of engineered marketing. Absolutely beautiful. I've been using this for two years. I know online dialogue like, uh, like they were my best friends, you know? Uh, another example is Crew. I'll just briefly run through this. This is an example of a company that was about to completely fail. They had no money left. The only thing they had was like 10,000 really nice Instagram-y type photos that they had like on a database somewhere, and they built Unsplash. Anybody use uh, Unsplash for stock photography? There you go. 11 million hits per month, just with this. So much better than one of those really big uh, articles. Um, then th this was their main customer acquisition strategy. They started putting developers in the marketing team. Ha magic happens when you put developers in the marketing team. And they started building all of these different tools. This one I absolutely love, app versus website. You can do this on Typeform in half an hour just by asking the right questions. Should I build an app or should I build a website? Here's another example, how much to make an app. It calculates, gives you an estimation of how much it would cost to make an app, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We built one too. We built one uh, three days ago, especially for the conference. So if you guys want to test your growth hacking skills, you can go to greater.growthtribe.io. It'll probably be full of bugs. That's why I put the picture of the guy that uh, built it. Uh, <laughs> We've been debugging it for two days. Let's see. I hope it's optimized for mobile. But don't launch. Just stick something out there and see what happens. And you're going to hate me on the last slide. And I won't tell you why. Ooh. <laughs> um, and then it gives you a score. Hopefully, it'll go viral. My prediction for the future, um, can you guys please read this article uh, that was written by a sports journalist? All right, anybody know what's special about this article? Anybody? This was written by a computer, okay? And 50% of all of these sports articles are being, starting to be written by machine learning algorithms. So I believe that machine learning will slowly automate 50% of marketers' jobs, not to mention conversion rate optimizers. Uh, learn to leverage them as soon as possible. Uh, there's a tool I absolutely love at the moment. This is like my unbounce for data science. It allows you to be a data scientist without being a data scientist. Uh, guys, you should probably already have read these if you're here. Uh, so these are just some book recommendations. If you're super lazy and ADD, just download Blinkist. You can read them each in 15 minutes. Uh, these are ones that you might not have read. The world is coming to an end with artificial superintelligence. Read these. It's really depressing, but it's really insightful as to uh, the economical implications of AI. Um, tools, everybody loves tools. Check them out. These are our favorite tools at the moment. It'll be in the slides. 
Uh, we're looking for speakers. Sorry, I have to do 30 seconds of sales. We're looking for speakers for our growth marketing events in Amsterdam. We have some budget. Come see me after. We'd love to see you guys. We have a really nice, highly targeted audience. And finally, if you want to know more, totally agree with you about the e-course. Sign up to the e-course. We share golden nuggets of information on a weekly basis, and then we retarget your Facebooks like a motherfucker. We'll be on your Facebook all the time, trying to get you to pay again and again and again. Uh, and then you can share me on social media so I can feel proud of myself and have more friends. Thank you.